Okay, here we are, back again to uh, repairing clocks after being away for a while. Uh, back now 40 pounds lighter and with three new joints, two new hips and a new knee. So let's get started with it. We're going to start out with a, by repairing a clock, cuckoo clock for retired colonel from North Carolina, retired from the uh, Air Force. So, having been in the Air Force myself, I'm always happy to be able to help a fellow airman. This box comes from North Carolina. It hasn't been opened yet. And it's from uh, Colonel Freeman. Take a look, see what we got in here. Get a knife and just carefully cut it. I want to save the box. So we can ship this back. Plant lights just went out for the night. Okay. Get the box out of the way. Get the bubble wrap out of the way. This one, this is the pendulum. Chalet type. Alrighty. Nice paper to protect. Okay, and put the dancers. It's a regular 25, has a manufacturing date of Doesn't look like things are in bad shape. One chain is off of the wheel. That would be a problem. The other thing I'd like to point out to people, if you have problems with the cook, I don't know if you can see inside there. Let me bring this over to the one of the things that can happen just for sake of a lot of you who have problems with a cuckoo uh, this chain is off the wheel on this side and the other thing that can mess things up and real easily done is you look at the bird and that wire that comes off of the left bellow 
this wire here, you see it's on top of the bird. That can really make things not work. It's supposed to be under the tail of the bird. So that could could be a problem and cause your clock to malfunction. Well, I can't run it on a test stand. The chain that was off is the one that's on the run side. And I just don't have small enough fingers to get in there to put the chain back on. So we'll just have to take the, uh, take the movement out and assess it from there. So the first thing we need to do is uh, get the chains off. box works. The way we get these chains off is of course to uh, open up a link on the chain like so and put it away and these are all tangled up. Chains are out, and, uh, and what I'll do is I think I'll take the pendulum bob off, and I think you can see there's a bit of dust in there, so I'll take the pendulum uh, leader out. Next thing you have to do to take the movement out is to remove the the uh, bellows. The one on this side is the one on the long leg, and this one's on the short leg. What we got to do is remove a screw and then pry it off of a of a. Uh, Brad. So we're going to remove the screw. And we're going to get another container to keep these parts in so they're not all tangled up. In. Okay. Keep all those containers of jelly meats come in, you know, and make good, uh, good containers. Anyway, we'll remove this screw. Then there's a brad that goes in here, and what we have to do is just kind of pry that off of there. Then uh, the wire for that to 
just comes off like so. So, and then we'll go get the other one. Just a screw. Brad keeps the bellows from twisting. Don't really attach it. Okay, so there's the left hand one. This is the wire that has to be under the tail of the cuckoo. And you might see there's a bit of dust in there. Okay. Now what we're going to look at here, I think. I'll up and go get my camera and we need to just look the platform of the dancers is up here and that's attached to a music box a little different. Normally that's the dancing platform is run separately. It's actually run by the music box. That's interesting. So anyway, what we need to look at here is uh, see here is the here's the mechanism, that little wire that moves in front of a little fan when this is getting ready to cuckoo the hour and then when this drops it releases the fan. You see there's not a whole lot of movement involved there. So I kind of remember where that is. We're going to end up having to take this music box out. So I'll take a look at it. It's held in by uh, also by screws, so why don't we get that music box out? And let me see here. There are two screws here that uh, hold the platform in that the dancers and music box are on. So we'll remove those screws. out by hand but with the uh, camera here I have to kind of grab it with something else. Working around the camera makes things a little bit awkward but anyway that's kind of tight. things right. But, uh, hope there's nothing in the front. Yeah, if we've done things right, that should uh, the wire shouldn't be a problem. This 
platform should lift off. Oh, it does. Looks like there's some little paper wedge on that left hand side. Look in here, there's a little piece of paper or thing there that's holding that tight. No, I should be able to lift that. Take that whole thing out. Okay. Now it's that to manipulate that out. platform out. Let's take a look at it. It doesn't look too bad. My poor camera's twisted here. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it's just, uh, just pretty dirty. And uh, that'll have to be cleaned. The music box will end up taking it apart. And uh, we're taking it off and we'll clean it later. And we, uh, boy, it's the tiniest roll I've ever seen on a music box. And the comb is very small. So anyway, everything in here looks to be okay. And there's the... There's the fan we talked about here. That's what that little lever from the cuckoo, the mo movement, uh, does. This is uh, start and stop. All right, we'll take a look at that. We'll clean that up later. Let's set that aside for now. Okay, now the next thing we want to do, the reason we had to get that platform out is that the cuckoo we wouldn't be able to pull that out because that arm for the cuckoo goes all uh, right in front of that platform it would uh, be difficult to get that out so the next thing to do is uh, and uh, people have commented and argued that they just unscrew the bird I generally just don't, it makes it difficult to get it back on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect it from the, the door in the front. And I'll move this up so you can see how that's done. Open this door. And I'm just going to straighten this wire that holds the cuckoo. To the door. I'll we'll shut the door and we'll close the little latch so it doesn't flop around. Now before we can take the movement out, we got to take the hands off. Let me uh, take a look here. Looks like we've got one nut. So we'll take hold the hand and turn the nut. Not. And we see a hand and a washer. We got a nut, a washer, and that hand comes right off. And then underneath that minute hand, there's another nut. It doesn't screw on, it's just got a square hole in it that uh, fits on there. Oh, wait, what's going on here? Oh, we have a little problem here with the hour hand. It's cracked um, right here. You see, there's a big crack in that hand, so that's probably going to cause a problem. It may go back on. I don't know what it might do. It. Just put a new hand on. Anyway, taking the hand off. That's yeah, it. Definitely see that crack. Anyway, there's a crack in that. 
that thing. Alright, now let's get the hands off. Now the movement will come out. And that's just a matter of one, two, three, four screws. So I'll just go ahead and off camera just undo those screws. Well, maybe I'll leave them. Camera. The camera in that makes it a little more difficult. I'm going to loosen these. If you loosen these up, okay. Now, there's a neat little screwdriver to have. It's split in the end, and you push this, you push this, it pushes those splits together so you can reach in and push the splits against the screw. And Stupid camera wasn't in the way, everything worked fine. I can't do it with the camera in the way. And at this point, all we need to do now is just lift this out of there. And the bird comes out. And we'll deal with it. It takes some little while to clean it up. And so what we need to do right now is just take a look at this and see what we've got and uh, it looks like uh, mostly it's very dusty um, a lot of dust inside that's the problem with cuckoo clocks because of the open holes uh, where the pendulum is, is in the bottom of the case and the holes for the for the chains it's very easy for dirt and dust to get in, so it looks like it's just, just, just very dusty and dirty. And we'll, uh, we'll now take a look. We can remove the cuckoo bird. It's off. You just gotta loosen that screw. I like the old birds that were made out of wood, and usually this whole piece was metal. A lot of times with these uh, relatively modern cuckoo clocks, is this plastic will will get uh, cracked or split. Okay. Anyway, now we just need to evaluate where we are with with this clock. Now, let me. I got a new magnifier here. My other one broke. So I gotta see if I can make this work at all. Yeah, let's try the camera through it and see how that works. Okay, there's our there's our movement. And uh, kind of see that uh, it doesn't look bad. Just dusty and dirty. Uh, next thing for me to do is check and see. Uh, let's see, there's an awful lot of oil right there. Let me see what I can do here. There you can see the, the dust a little better. What's inside here? You see the some dirt on the pinions. And uh, just generally through the years, they get dirty. I think, uh, what did I say? The, I looked at this and it said, uh, yeah, it says 80, 20, it's a um, 24, I think it was made in uh, 1984. So, been around a while. Uh, anyway. 
way. I'll check uh, now to see if there's any wear in it. First wheel. And if I move that, looks okay. Let's get this lever out of the way. You see, typically a second wheel, that pivot right there. You see how that's flopping back and forth. That means that that hole is worn oval. So that's going to need rebushed. I would bet that on the other side, that the, uh, on this side, the uh, escape wheel is seems okay. But from what I would bet, and I won't be able to see it tell until I take this all apart. Probably that uh, escape wheel is going to have to be oh, rebushed too. Looking at that pivot. Ooh, man, it's pretty stiff. Yeah, I can see it's worn. It's very, very dirty, but let me wipe that off first here. I'll wipe the grease off of it. And you can see how that wheel moves back and forth in there. So that's one that needs rebushed. I don't know about the next one. Let me see what we got here. Not badly worn, but I might rebush it anyway. So it lasts longer. Anyway, I figure if this was made in, we're getting 30. 36, 38 years this ran, so we we'll get it rebushed, it'll be run another 30 years. Now the next thing to do is take it apart, and we'll, we'll do that tomorrow. Okay, here's the movement, and the front part of the movement contains all of the levers and elements that are responsible for the uh, triggering the cuckoo and controlling the number of times that the uh, cuckoo is made. On the back side of the movement, here you see the levers that lift the bellows to make it cuckoo. This is the hammer that makes the gong. And then this, uh, one of the same levers from the front, the lift lever, also lifts this set of levers, this particular set here, and uh, also and see the uh, this little wire lifts up to catch the fan when it goes into warning to start the to set the music box at the hour, and this lever is the one that gets pushed to unlock the music box. This lever actually pushes on this lever to unlock the music box and get it started. All right. Now we're going to have to take this lever off and I'm noticing that it is set just slightly lower than horizontal. I want to get it back as close as possible to the setting that it's on right now so that we don't have trouble with the music box. So we've got to remove all of this from the back of the clock. And we also have to remove these levers. What I should point out to you is that this is called a rack. And this is called a snail, obvious. And what uh, happens there is there's a lift lever back here that lifts this particular lever so that that rack falls. 
when that rack falls, this piece called the rack tail falls onto one of the steps of the snail. And that snail then limits how far that rack falls as I just released it. Let's watch what happens when I release it. The rack falls and now that number of teeth has to be lifted by this piece which is called the gathering pallet and that will uh, here I'll try to run it for you and that shuts off okay when this piece drops underneath the end of the rack that allows this piece up here to fall in front of a pin on this wheel and that pin is what stops there you can see the pin down there that pin is what stops the cuckooing all right so <clears throat> we've got a bunch of very tiny little eclipse that are going to have to come off uh, to get this apart we got to take all of these pieces off we got to take these pieces off and then we'll uh, be able to separate the plates clean everything and then uh, set the uh, or redo uh, check the bushings and rebush those that are worn so uh, we'll start by removing easiest thing to do is start by removing the hammer and the two levers that are control the, the bellows and I gotta take a look here and I think we've got yeah we have to use my magnifier here uh, okay alright what we have is a wire and I gotta get my magnifying glasses little wire right here it's tied a little bit of a knot it's the spring for the hammer we want to undo it and we need to pull that out of the hole once that's freed then we can just turn this hammer backwards and there'll be a little pin on the inside of the plate it comes into view and we line that up with that slot in the plate and just pull that out and that's how the hammer is removed and we got these two levers um, same thing with this one pulls right out Rotate this backwards, and that pulls right out. Okay, so that takes those off. Now this is the this is the star wheel that uh, lifts the levers and the hammer, make things work nicely. These slightly older movements have a a screw on them. The newer movements look exactly like this except the star wheel simply pressed on and it gets to be kind of a booger to get off so when I repair one of those I usually drill a hole tap it and then put a screw in it to make it easier for the next repairman to get it off so we have to take this off oh that's a little tight I better get a bigger screwdriver we're going to take that off Okay, we just loosen that and then this will come right off. Okay, now this uh, lever is just screwed on there. So we will take that screw out. Okay, 
And then this one, uh, this is one we'll have to adjust later. It's, uh, uh, let's see, yeah, we're going to have to remove this piece from the end of this arbor. And it'll have to be adjusted afterwards. Loosen that. And this comes off. And now that'll free up this one on the front. Uh, except that there's an, there's an E-clip right there that'll have to be removed. All right. So anyway, uh, might as well go ahead and take this off. That's going to have to come off for that particular lever to get out too. So Boy, undo that. And okay, that's everything we can get off the back now. Okay, used to be able to unscrew this piece too, but now this was new enough that it's now pressed in permanently, riveted in. All right, now to get these off, we've got to get everything off of here. We've got to take these little E-clips out. There's one here, there's one here, and then there's one on the inside here that we have to take off. So let's see if we can get that one off first. little tiny guys. Okay, we get that one off. Now we go to the front. And to remove the rack and snail, we have to take the center wheel off first, the intermediate wheel, or the intermediate wheel. It's got a little washer on it, and that washer keeps this from sliding forward. So, take that off. We've got to loosen that E-clip. washer will come off and with that free uh, as soon as we actually have to take the rack and snail off together it's the easiest way so we got to remove this e-clip too pieces should come off together. They slide off. There's your rack and snail. Here's the rat tail or that falls down onto the snail to determine how many teeth will drop and how many teeth will have to be lifted and that controls the number of cuckoos. So take those off. Now the intermediate wheel that goes from the minute hand to the hour hand. Okay. And this lever, which is the one that goes under the rack, allowing this part to drop down in front of 
that warning wheel and the pin on the warning wheel to stop the cuckooing. So uh, to get that one off, we've got to remove this spring. And we also have another E-clip on the inside of the uh, plate that has to come off. So we'll remove this spring. It just makes this work positively so that it drops forcibly. No, oh, take that. Oh, come on. Okay. Pull it up over. And that's got to go around enough to unhook a little tab up here. Right there. And then that whole thing can slide off. Okay. Now to get this lever off, we have to remove that E-clip from the inside of the plate. I'm going to take these glasses off for a second. Push that. Good, we now got that. Okay, there's our... There's our little E-clip. Fun and games. And now we have that out. This lever. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Can pull right out. And now we've got this one to come out. And you can see the we look at uh, that particular lever, it's called a lift lever. You can see that it, as this turns, there's two cams on this center arbor that lifts this lift lever. And as that lifts, that unhooks the lever that holds the warning pin, rotates around, and this part of this lever gets in front of that warning pin and uh, until this drops off of the off of this cam and starts the cuckoo in motion so anyway if you look at this cam there's a longer cam and a shorter cam this is what trips the hour and this is what trips the half hour as it doesn't, uh, this one will lift just enough that that uh, only one tooth is released on the uh, rack, so it only cuckoos once every half hour. And the longer one will lift it enough for the rack to drop completely onto the snail. And then you get the number of strikes in the hour. So then we take, we can kind of work these around take that out and uh, it would be nice to take this completely out get it out of the way okay so we'll leave that the other thing I want to point out is this is the mechanism right here that holds the the cuckoo out when the cuckoo is out see that flag moves and this drops down in front of uh, drops down in front of this pin right here the silver colored pin and that holds the the cuckoo out until uh, the cuckoo is done one of the levers on the front drops and hits this releasing releasing that hook and the cuckoo can come back out because this pin there's the that's how that works to push the bird out and then we push on this back here and that releases it at the end of the cuckoo strike so that's what makes the bird come out and holds holds the bird out until the cuckooing is done so when we put this back together, 
I want to make sure that that flag is behind this pin and because it's really easy to put this back together and have that pin behind the flag and then you got a mechanism that locks up and doesn't work. So you got to be careful when, when reassembling this at that. This little black flag goes behind that pin. So now we're ready. We're not going to be able to, what I really would like to do is take that, uh, is, uh, take this little gathering pallet off. It's not easy to get off. Um, it's, uh, there we go. I'll just kind of push underneath and force it off. Okay. Gathering pallets off. And we can see, if we look here, look at the dirt on that pivot. That's dried oil. Dirt collected. These pivots are very, very, very dirty. And uh, so we're going to clean that up. And uh, yeah. so, and then we'll take a look at uh, individual pivots and see what needs to be replaced as far as uh, bushings. Okay, so the next step is uh, to loosen these nuts. And, and we'll take these off. Four of those. Okay, and now this plate will now lift off. Let's push on these. There we go, and here's the, here's the crutch and the pallets, called the anchor, and let's take a look at it, and, oh luckily, wow oh, that's not worn at all. Just very dirty. I take that off. There's no groove, nothing marked on that at all. Yeah, it looks good. Looks real good. So, sometimes the escape wheel will we're a groove in this. This is the thing that the pendulum attaches to and this rocks back and forth and releases one of these teeth at a time. So this is the anchor. Works in conjunction with the escape wheel. Allow the teeth to be released one at a time and that's how the thing keeps time. Alright, so now it's real easy to see how really simple these movements are. On the run side it actually makes it run and keep time. You've got just main wheel and this plastic gear here runs the center wheel. You got those two and you have the escape wheel and that's really all there is to the run side. And I'm going to put those in a separate uh, container. Okay, I got to turn the camera on when I was taking this side out. Basically what comes out of there is this piece that uh, uh, opens and shuts the door. This is the hook that's got a, a uh, E-clip on it. And uh, 
I've loosened it. Another E clip, and that comes off. And the only other thing is this. This is the second wheel that has uh, two little tabs on it. Those are the tabs that actually lift this lever to make the door open. And then you've got the warning wheel with the uh, warning pin on it. It stops the, the kukui. And then you get the fan, the fly, the governor, the regulator, and then the main wheel. So uh, anyway, that's as far as we're going to take this apart. To, uh, to get this apart the rest of the way, uh, one of the ways you can get this apart is by taking, uh, you have to, it has to come out this way to get this, there's a shoulder behind this gear, way down in here, the shoulder down here. It keeps this from being pulled out that way, so it doesn't do any good to take this gear and the spring off. This is a clutch mechanism. This slips without turning the whole thing, and that allows you to turn the hands when you set the time. So the only way to get this piece out is to force this piece completely off of here, and that's really not a good idea because... Uh, uh, it just is very difficult to get it back on and you need really a puller to do that and I don't do enough of these to justify buying a puller and generally there's not a lot of pressure on that that bearing and so it's, it's very seldom that that wears enough to justify taking this off and rebushing that center so <clears throat> we'll just leave that intact as we will the wire for the cuckoo and this will all get cleaned. As you can see, there's an awful lot of gummy goop on there that needs to be taken off. And what we'll do before we put it in the cleaner is remove as much of that as we can. Uh, keep from contaminating the... Wow. I'm looking at that. Oh, maybe that's just gunk in there. Let me get a toothpick here. Uh, what do I do with my toothpicks? It's a problem when you haven't been in the workshop for a while. You forget where you put things. Oh, there they are back there. And uh, take a toothpick. I want to look at this. Oh, right here. Yeah, it's just gunk. Yeah, just, I don't know. I can actually see the wear in that hole. If you look at it very carefully, and I don't know, maybe I can. Let's try putting that under the magnifier. Okay, I cleaned that hole out. And I want you to be able to see. This, you can see. That hole clearly is worn badly. You know, it's egg-shaped. The smaller part of the hole that's pointing up uh, in about the 10 o'clock direction, you can see it has a smaller diameter than, than the part that's pointing down toward the 4 o'clock position. And uh, that's the side that's worn. The smaller part is just exactly the size of the pivot and so we're going to have to put a new bushing in that but that's how badly worn they get and you start having uh, egg-shaped holes instead of round holes and that's what causes the problem so we're going to look at it from the other side oh, wrong hole it's over here Uh, where'd he go? There he is. From this side it's not as apparent, but you can still see now in the lower right part the smaller worn part of the hole. So we're going to be cutting that out of there and replacing it with a new piece of brass with a hole in it that's nice and round.
Okay, so there's the plates. There's the cuckoo side of the gears. There's the run side. And here are all the other miscellaneous parts that have to go back on. The next step is to just clean these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them into a basket. I'm going to put them into the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and uh, clean them. So we'll, we'll do that next. And, uh, I'm just going to put them into that machine right there and uh, run it. It'll clean it and I'll take it into the other room to the laundry sink and rinse them off and then I'll bring the parts back and uh, we'll do the hand cleaning it goes on. And So I'll just, I'll not video all of that, I'll just uh, skip that part. But we'll go and we'll come back after they're rinsed. I'll show you about cl hand cleaning and making sure that we get every bit of dirt out of this thing before we start doing any repairs. Okay, before I put these into the cleaner, you might like to see what some of these gears look like before. A little bit of fuzz and dust. That pivot doesn't look bad. Needs polished. But when you look at the other pivot, you see how incredibly greasy and dirty that is. an idea. That's what I meant by dirt and why clocks need to be cleaned. Let's take a look at this one. This is the uh, other gear. You see the dust that uh, Pinion is just filled with grease, dirt. So at some point in the past, this was improperly oiled because that grease shouldn't be in those leaves of the pinions. Okay, here's the main wheel. Doesn't look too bad. One we need to examine carefully, make sure there's no cracks in the plastic, otherwise we've got to replace the gear. That's where the chain runs through. You see that really needs to be cleaned very good too. It's filled with grime. Let's look at uh, this one. And the pivots. Pretty greasy and dirty looking. And here's the uh, warning wheel. See the dirt in the pinions. You look at the gear itself, you can see the dirt and grease between the between the leaves, or between the teeth, that's all got to be cleaned. Get to be like a dental hygienist. Anyway, okay, <clears throat> here is everything cleaned. Let's take a look at some of these. We'll use the magnifier again. If you take the, the wheels now. Let's see, let's go zoom in just a little bit. Okay. Hey, you see how nice those chain wheels are now. <clears throat> Pinions. I see here's the escape gear. And I 
Okay. Things nice and clean now. There's the levers. And okay, I put the uh, three wheels in on the run side and on the back plate we look at the second wheel definitely needs replaced and you can see on this thing where it's worn it's worn there see the cup so we're going to mark that as rebushed so that uh, and we see that it's got to be that's the unworn side so we're going to have to file out that side Oh, if we look at the escape wheel looks okay. Looking at the front side, main wheel second. Yeah, that's going to have to be rebushed. And this is one we looked at. Yeah, look how bad that is. Look how bad that is. That's the escape wheel. You see where it's worn? That's where it should be. And that's where it is when it's running. So. That pivot definitely is pivot hole is badly worn, so that's got to be rebushed. On the strike side, the second wheel needs uh, rebushed on the front and. Needs rebushed on the back. Again, you can see where it's just moving around too much. The other way to tell if something is worn too badly is put the gear in. We wiggle it this way, wiggle it this way. You can see that this way it's got a little bit of movement. But if we move it this way, Got a lot of movement. So that's moving a whole bunch where it's worn badly. So anyway, that's uh we got five total bushings we gotta put in. Okay, before we do any rebushing, what we have to do is put every take every wheel and uh, put it into the lathe and polish pivots. So we put those in and we take a look at the pivots. And it looks like things look pretty good. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit more. A block of wood and I'm gonna put some polishing compound on it. Turn this on. Stuck. Um. 
pusher. That's this little guy. And we'll put a dab of oil on it. Pick up the speed on this a little bit. <laughs> to do that with all of the gears. It's only like six of them, so I won't video every one of them, but that's what we do. Oh, by the way, Colonel, today is March 5th. This is exactly 60 years ago today I entered the Air Force. So that was... Uh, 1962, yeah. a long time ago. Mm. for the second wheel and we have to bush that at least the one side for the escape wheel. I'm going to check that other side. It's the front side that we have to, to bush for the escape wheel. I want to check the back side but you know, we'll start with the second wheel since we have to know both <coughs> both pivot sizes to be able to choose a pivot or bushing. I'm going to first start out and find out what the size of this pivot is on the uh, front side of the second wheel. Exactly, uh, uh, exactly one millimeter. One millimeter and the back side is also one millimeter. Okay. okay, so what I have here then is a package of bushings and the bore and these is one millimeter. That would be a very tight fit. It'll just be able to just barely broach those out to make them fit perfectly. The uh, diameter of the outside diameter of the bushing is three millimeters, so I'll need a a cutter to cut that uh, open to that size. And what I'm going to do is uh, first thing I have to get my materials together, the bush, the uh, cutters, and the uh, brooches that I need, plus the file to file out those holes. Okay, these are the reamers that we're going to use to cut the hole in the plate for the bushing to fit in, and the bushings are three millimeters in diameter on the outside. So the 
cutter that I need needs to be slightly smaller than that. And this one is too This one is 2.97, I don't know if you can read that or not, 2.97 millimeters, and that's what we used to cut the hole. So when we press that bushing in, it's going to fit very tight. <clears throat> this is the file that I'm going to use to, to file all the unworn side of the hole in the plates. This is cutting brooch I'm going to use to make the hole in the bushing just slightly bigger so that the pivot will fit in there. And this is a smoothing brooch that will burnish and polish the inside of the bushing after it's been cut. We'll start with the file where the second wheel goes and this is the unworn side I've marked the black marker so I'm going to look under my under my magnifier I'm going to use this file to just slightly file out that side that is unworn so that when I use the use the reamers use the reamers to uh, cut the hole that it will center itself. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's good. I also need to do the same on the uh, back plate. Same thing. I'm just going to take the file. I'm just going to file that unworn side. So that my cutter will center. Okay. Here's my drill, and uh, I'm going to start out, drill those out with a slightly smaller bit. So, what I'm going to do is just Find that center and let this you try to get it straight. Okay, and then we'll do the other one. Second wheel hole. Gets us started, and now I'll put in the 2.97 reamer, and we will cut it. Set. Put that aside. Now to make it easier to start, 
I'll use a little chamfering bit and cut the little ridge off that, make just a little starting hole. Do the same thing here. Take a block and I have to build this up a little bit to get this one. I'll take one of those bushings and putting it in from the inside. We put it in all of them. And get it started with a hammer. And then a little flat punch. And we're gonna, I'm gonna bridge that from the front. I'll put it from the back. Okay, I did. Okay. Okay, and now we have to size the hole in that thing to fit the, in the bushing, to fit the, fit the pivot, and the pivot won't go in, so we need to use, and I need to change this, put a cutting brooch in, it's a five-sided, five sides to the cutting edges. And what I do is I go into the bushing and I just try to keep it parallel or perpendicular both directions. Do some cutting. Pivot doesn't quite go. Because when you drive those bushings in too, it tends to close the hole on. Okay, now that's in there, but it's very tight. See, there's very little flexibility. But what I want to do is go to the other side and broach from this side. in and there's a nice plate of that so that's that's what we got to do okay now we're going to broach out the other side the same way only the other side of the gear The same thing we're going to start. Not quite there. side, broach a bit from there, and see what we've got now. 
Okay, now we got a nice fit on that, that side. Alright, now what we want to do is we want to switch the brooches. We're going to go with this brooch, which is a smoothing brooch. They're nice and round. Now we have to put a tad bit of oil on those. So I'll put a bit of oil on it. Very tiny amount. And we'll go to the this thing and we will now we'll kind of rotate it while we spin it. And what we're doing is smoothing the inside of that hole to both sides. One. Both sides. I want to do a little, just chamfer that, take any edges off. And then we will put this back in. Put the plate on. Spins nice. We'll tighten it up with a couple of knots. Oops! I'm smacking the hell out of my camera. Side shake, and we're done. Okay, just check the size of the pivot on the escape wheel. And it's the same as that uh, second wheel. Now, obviously, the hole that's in the <coughs> front side is very, very worn. No question about it. I mean, it just this is, this is just unbelievable how far that will bend. I mean, it gets, actually gets caught. But when I put it in the hole on the back plate, I see a little movement that way, but you know, it doesn't look too well. Say when I move. Oh, that's moving quite a bit. Yeah. I think I'll go ahead and rebush both sides because uh, both sides are worn. This one particularly. And we'll do the same thing with this one. All right, we have the <coughs> two gears now put in. They've both been bushed. And uh, see the, the motion is extremely smooth works very very well uh, no more flopping around like a fine jewel now ok 
Okay, the only other bushing we have to do now is the second wheel on the strike side. And then we can put the movement back together. After we uh, clean up all this stuff. It's working extremely well. Very, very well. I put the anchor in so I can check to make sure that the pivot holes for those are just fine and when I just put a little pressure on that wheel it's running beautifully. Yep, that looks like that one's all set to go. Now we'll just do the rebushing on the second wheel on the strike side. And we're ready to start putting things back together. Okay, that uh, arbor sticking out there is what the uh, gathering pallet goes on. And we can see there's a good bit of play in that. And it's already marked. That's the unworn side where the black dot is. So we'll file that side just a tiny bit measure up the arbor see what uh, bushing we have to put in there we we'll look on the back side where that second wheel is and let's take a look at that there's a good bit of play in that one too and that's where it's worn and that's the unworn side don't have to remove much but we got to put uh, a bushing here and a bushing on that one and that will uh, be all we need to do to restore this to actually better than new condition yes holy mackerel Pretty thick one. It looks like one point, about one point seven. So the front is one point seven. Front one point seven millimeters. And the back pivot. bushing size. All we need to look for the reamer size, then a cutting brooch size, and a smoothing brooch size. Okay, I try to test fit. The one, uh, this has got a bore of 1.25. The pivot I measured at uh, 1.2. This is still just a relatively tight fit, and by the time I press it into the the hole, it'll close the hole and it'll have to be broached out a tiny bit anyway. So I'm going to use a 1.25 bore for the uh, front bushing. And then the other one is uh, closest I have. It's a one and a half millimeter bore and I, I need a 1.7 bore so I'll use this size we'll broach it out to 1.7 for the uh, for the front side right now the difference is that the outside diameter of this one is three and a half millimeters and the outside diameter of this one is three millimeters so we're going to have to use two different uh, reamers to uh, to cut the holes to fit the bushings into. So I'm going to do this one first and uh, then we'll switch to the other one. Let me get those pieces out. Okay, here's the hole that we're going to be rebushing right here. The unworn side is over here. 
I'm going to take this little grow bay file and we'll put it in there and this isn't that bad so I'm just going to give it just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of filing. And now the next thing to do is going to take a relatively small reamer and cut that out. And uh, just give us a starting hole. Alright. Now, normally, you, in the old days when they cut these holes, they cut them with a brooch which is tapered. So you'd always want to make sure that you, and you can continue to do that today uh, with a brooch instead of uh, one of these reamers. You'll want to always cut from the inside if you use a brooch because they're tapered and you want the taper to be so that when you put the bushing in you drive it into the narrower part of the hole and makes it so it can't fall out. Uh, it doesn't matter which side you go from here because this cuts the tear. The parallel hole. Boy, that's a especially hard spot in the brass. There we go. Tough spot in that brass. Okay. And in this case, we're going to use the same room. Oh, what's the problem? I just didn't use the smaller one. Went right to the three and a half. Okay, so now what we want to do is use this. And I'll tell you what, these, these particular bushings are a little bit... stand proud of the... Uh, plate. Uh, let me check and see what the thickness of the plate is. I think it's only a millimeter. Yeah, it's a millimeter thick and these bushings I'm putting in here are uh, one and a half millimeters high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the plate flat and what did I just do with that bushing? Okay. <laughs> Found it. Sitting right there on top of the plate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the... Normally you'd put the bushing in from the back, drive it into the tapered hole. Since it's a parallel hole, it doesn't really matter which side we put them in. I'm going to put this in from the front the oil cup sticking out. It doesn't really matter because it's going to get a new oil cup anyway. I'm going to put that on there and drive it in. The reason why I do that is I want this flush to the inside of the plate here so that we don't lose end shake. Right now that I have that in there uh, I need to get rid of that excess. And what I do to get rid of that excess is I use this little guy, this little guy, and uh, going to grind that down, stick it in the middle, see how close we are, going to go a little bit more. good. And then to finish it off, I've got a real nice little 
set of diamond tipped grinders. And I'll put this diamond ball in here and I will grind that now with a diamond ball. Pretty much takes it down flush with the front of the plate. There's just a little bit of a burr on that, and I'll, I'll just touch that off with a with a uh, flat file and some uh, buffing papers. Right, put these away. Uh, where's my flat file? I want to just touch that just a little bit. Take the burr off the edge. Okay, that's good. And then get a little say thing you use for nails. Where's my buff? And that uh, takes that out pretty good. And now we'll do the, the broaching. Okay, we'll take... Uh, that's not going to go in there. Okay. i got to get my cutting broach. fits just fine. We'll just take a tiny bit off the front through the front. Okay. And then I'm going to use a smoothing brooch. That's the one. I need a little tiny dab of oil. that to the front and polish that okay brooches I take my file so whole this is the unworn side so I'm going to have to file that side just a little bit So now what we want to do, we take our drill, take the smaller, uh, wait, we get a different reamer, we need a three and a half reamer, that's the right box here. So we need, this is three and a half, 
three and a half right here. And we're gonna put this one away. This is I mean, say three and a half I actually mean three point four seven. That's uh, three hundredths under the actual size of the bushing so it's a good tight fit. So we'll start the hole with a smaller reamer. Make it easier to cut. Okay. And again, it doesn't matter if go front or back. Okay, that was fine. And we'll go with the full-size reamer. Okay, and then we will cut this puppy out. Nope, we can get that in there straight. Perpendicular. Okay, hole cut, and now we're going to take our chamfering tool. I'm going to take the burr off, like so. And then we will now take the bushing, which I have here, and I'm going to set up a way to hammer that in. Again, this bushing is uh, higher than the plate is thick. I'm going to put this in from the front. Okay, that makes it flush in the back so we don't lose end shake. And I'm done with that. And now what I want to do is uh, cut that down so that it's relatively flush with the front. And again, we get our little cutting friend. Looking close. Just a tiny bit more. Uh, we're okay. Let's get the diamond ball. work. Okay. 
Okay. In. Cutting brooch in my pen vise here, maybe. There we go. Okay. Now, it's probably going to take a few tries before we get it right. So we go in here and we start cutting. this perpendicular and we keep trying okay now we got just starting to go through so I'm going to come to the other side do some cutting there and that off. Okay, and now this arbor, the gathering pallet goes on, goes all the way in to the shoulder, and no longer flops like it did before. Okay, and now we want to go back to the smoothing brush first I'm going to take and cut that shoulder off of there let's cut that burr in the same on the front okay just had the wrong pin vise that's all all right here's the uh, smoothing brush do it. So that goes in there. Okay, let's put the plate, other plate on it. See how things operate. I gotta get rid of these glasses. Let's 
see how we got in shake. Moves back and forth. And it runs smoothly. Okay. And no more flopping. But I'm going to put the other gears in and take a look at it now. Okay. There's that uh, when it was flopping around. Now let's wiggle this back and forth a little bit. I don't see it. See the movement now. That's how it should be. And on the other side. There's that one. It's a tiny little bit. Okay. And now we got the gears in. We run this way. That runs just as smooth and silk now. Everything runs real nice. So now what we can do is uh, put this puppy back together. And the chains are all cleaned. And now we're ready to clean the pivot holes before we start putting these back together. Also, I've got to put a drop of oil in that in that center wheel pivot before I get that back together. Okay, before we put anything together, I now take a toothpick. Take a toothpick, go into every pivot hole, and spin it around in every pivot hole. And you can see what starts to come out. I still get gunk out. This is why it's important to take a clock apart if you're really going to clean it. over here where the levers go. Just clean them out. Okay, now okay. Now those pivot holes are nice and clean. And we gotta do the other plate. Okay, the clicks on the uh, chain wheels, we need to lubricate that just a little bit. So we're just going to take a brush and put just a tiny, tiny bit of lithium grease, white lithium grease, on those clicks.
that spreads it down around on those teeth. That's all it's necessary. Yeah, we're going to put this back together now. And there are two pieces that we, of the lever types that we have to keep and put, to, put on the inside before we put the plates on. This has to go on here. That's uh, what keeps that door open. And then this has to go. So this lever can get on that like so. All right. We have to remember before we close the plates to turn that little flag on the inside of that pin like so. That's got to go like that. And then this will keep the door open. Okay, so that has to go in first and now we'll put that E-clip on there. Here's the E-clip. That's on there permanently. Okay, now we just got to start putting gears in. And I can't do that with this camera here, so. But anyway, run side. We got this one that goes in. That's got the plastic gear that runs the motion works. That moves the hands. We have a second wheel. Okay, second wheel goes in. This is the one we put a bushing in. And it goes right there. And we have the escape wheel. Goes this way, and that's also one we put a bushing in. Like so. Now we get the it's got the three wheels in that makes it run and plastic gear in the back of this main wheel runs the gear that that makes the uh, that runs the uh, motion works that moves the hands all right now we got a main gear it's got to go in here and this pin comes toward the back of the clock. That's the pin that the uh, star wheel goes on that lifts the cuckoo hands. So that's got to go in that little hole there. All right, then this, these paddles are the things that are going to move, make that uh, this guy work. him under the under the hook and we want that this is also the one that has the arbor on it that will contain the gathering pallet so we want to put this in in such a way that it's um, these are about horizontal because those paddles are going to hit this little guy and lift this. So I'm going to put him in there. And this guy goes on here. Well, let's see if we can get that in there. before we put the plates on to bring that flag around and put it in there. Now this is the warning wheel. It has a pin on it. And to set this correctly, we want the pin toward the top of the movement. Like 
think so. And you know, the other one we got to put in there is the uh, is the governor. Where did I put it? Find the governor. It was in the pan, and uh, which say, does this go this way? This way? Well, the pinion gear has to go up against the teeth of the third wheel, the warning wheel. Yeah, turn that warning wheel again. Get that pin toward the top. I'll put the governor in. Okay. And now, the only other thing we need to go inside here is the uh, anchor. Okay, there we go. And then this crutch will go in here. And now we're ready to work everything together, maybe. Center wheel. Now I gotta work all these in there. And uh before you get that flag wrong, I'm gonna get I gotta get this camera out of the way. Okay. So we got it together. And uh It runs. I think finally, this little devil was giving me a hard time getting it back in there. But I finally got it in. Got the flag behind the pin. Because now if that lifts, uh, okay, there we go. The door is now out. Oh, you got to put the spring back on that, and then that will open and close the door. I was going crazy. I found had two of the nuts here. I had set the other two nuts down. I couldn't find them. Couldn't find them. Looking, I thought maybe I knocked them on the floor. I'm looking all over the place. I finally am just picking everything up. I pick up my little stake back here, and you think can't be anything under there. That's a piece of metal and it's flat. Pick it up. There's the two nuts sitting underneath in that groove. Okay, now we can put the other two nuts on. Alright. It's probably getting old. Crap just happens, I guess. Alright. Okay, now we got to uh, get everything put on the front, but I want to get that spring back first. Now we'll get back right. Before we start putting any of the levers and everything back on the front, this is a, yeah, we need to oil all the pivot holes. I want to use a little oiler and a container of oil. Got some oil in this little black thing. And I just take this, dip it in there, and just touch it to a pivot. And that's all the oil that's necessary. You don't want any oil on the plates. It just attracts dust. It sucks the oil out of pivots. So we're going to make sure that everything gets oiled. Um, okay. Oil the ones on the back too. But uh, Anyway, we just put a God, I don't know. There ain't no way to really. Let me move this camera around. Maybe we can see it better this way. Huh? Okay, anyway. Now the viewer is upside down. Okay, there we go. Alright, so I just want a tiny drop on each pivot. All we need is a film.
still need a bunch of oil. And remember that no oil whatsoever goes on any of the levers that uh, okay the only thing I'm going to oil other than other than the pivots is I'm going to put uh, a tiny drop on the surface of the pallets okay that's it now we can start with the levers okay it's <coughs> time to put the levers back on the front and uh, start by saying you see these two little cams these are what starts the cuckoo mechanism this little cam makes a cuckoo the half hour this bigger cam is what's going to set the number of of cuckoos for the hour and the first lever we're going to put on is a lift lever and it goes in here and like so and it's got a couple of functions here's the part that's lifted by the cams is this right here and when that is lifted it also lifts this part over here that gets in front of the warning pin uh, when the uh, when the cuckoo is set to strike so we want to set this up right what I want to start out with is this big cam just past where it lets that lift lever fall okay so I got that lift lever in there and that's going to be held on on the inside of the plate by an e-clip and the second lever that goes on is this one and this also has a couple of functions this little tab right here is the tab that ends up pushing on the lever inside that releases the cuckoo door and this lever is the one that holds the rack teeth and goes underneath the, the rack at the end of the strike so, and this little tab up here is the one that catches the warning pin to stop the strike as well okay this little pin is the one that rides on the gathering pallet we'll put the gathering pallet on in a bit okay so those two levers have to be put on and they're held on by eclipse on the inside of the plate so we're going to put those eclipse on I think those are the tiny ones, yeah. These are the ones that drive me crazy. Because they are so tiny. Okay. The magnetism of those just drove me nuts. Okay. So now we have those two in there, okay. and uh, the other thing we have to put on then is that spring, okay, the way the spring works goes on that post. hook goes over the top and then you have to take let's see where we go we have to take this around and hook it over the top 
of that lever like that. And so it's right there. Okay. Takes care of that. Okay, now we got this so that it's sprung. That works well. And we've got intermediate wheel. And goes on like that. And the next thing we got to do, since this is just after the hour, and we want to put on a, what we want is for the rack hook that's going to fall onto the snail, the rack hook here, it's going to fall onto that snail to be in the middle of a step. So the rack goes between and I'll put okay, I'm going to start this on. And I'm going to start this on. Lift this rack is going to go between the wheel and the snail and the snail itself. And now what we want is for that rack when it falls, when this that that rack tail is in the middle of a step. And if it's not, we have to disconnect this, rotate it slightly, until that rack tail is in the middle of a step. I've got a couple of things. I've got to put a E-clip on the, uh, on that one. I don't think this one back here. I'm going to have to go to my stock. I think that one eclipse probably flew across the room. That's probably much too big. Let's see. Oh, that'll work. Okay. Okay, there we go. The other thing we got to put on the front then is the uh, gathering pallet. So when this is at rest and that is underneath, and let me pull this now to okay, and everything is set. The pin is against the the stop then this needs to be put on that post so that this little pit thing is is in slot. Okay, just like that. Okay. And now I need to tap that down. Hard punch. Put that right over the over a harbor that that sets on. Should be able to feel it. Ah, that ain't good.
Okay. There it is. Okay. Okay, now let's make sure I didn't drive it on too far. It's dragging. What we'll do now is just see if it's working. Okay. Let's drop this down. Okay, what's keeping that from falling? Okay. Falls and then it should run. Okay, try it again. Bird comes out. Should stop, stop, bird goes back in, everything's working fine. Okay, now that's all set. Okay. Alright, now on the back, we've got this lever, and this is one. It has that screw that goes into a threaded hole and let's see how that goes. This is the this is the one that's going to push the lever on the music box to turn it turn it on. have to align that and then uh, where's that other little lever? This one. It's there. Okay, it took a minute to figure out how this all went back together. This is a completely different way of operating things. But right now, this lever goes here, that's attached to the same lever as the lift lever on the front, and as the lift lever on the front gets lifted, this lever lifts, that pushes this lever up, that means this part then uh, pushes against this part of the music box and that unlocks the music box so it can play. Uh, at the same time this lever little wire is lifted that goes in and, and stops the fan on the music box puts it into warning then when that lift lever is released on the front these both drop drop down. This allows the music box to play. This moves away from the fan allowing the music box to play. And when it shuts off, then these won't be used again until the next hour. Now all I've got to put on the star wheel. And what we do is we run the we run the strike 
the cuckoo until it goes into lock right there. And then we put this star wheel on. And it should generally be with two prongs um, forming a line that are parallel to the side of the of the movement. And we can tighten that down. We can adjust it if we have to. Tighten that screw. And that's ready to go. And now all we got to do is put the lift levers in for the cuckoo and for the hammer. The first lever that goes in is the one that has the longest arm on it. And that goes in the bottom hole. When I put that, see there's a little pin right here that's got to go through that slot right there. So this slides in and we rotate it and that's in position. Then we take the short arm, do the same thing, put it into position, rotate it. Now the last thing to go in is the hammer. And we put it in position. And we find the pivot hole. There we go slides around and then the only other thing we have to do for the hammer is to reset the spring and we do that The little one. Okay. It'll be approximately okay. Operates fine. We're all set to go. So this movement is back together, ready to run, and uh, I think we'll. Stop here because we now need also to clean and oil this thing, which you don't want to do, it gets really tricky. Is uh, mess with the position of the comb. It's best not to take this comb off because getting it adjusted so that it's uh, being played right is very difficult. But we can take the rest of these parts apart and get the grease off of them. Uh, check this out. Okay, well, let's first get some dust off of this. So first thing we're going to do is take the dancing platform off. Okay, looks like just two screws hold that on. Well, let's take that off. Alright, that was simple enough. Let's see how we are here. I don't 
see anything there. The particularly a problem. Clean these up for good. And we'll leave everything alone on it. Looks okay. Put a drop of oil maybe on each one of those dancers. Okay. So this is the top surface. Get a rag here and wipe this off. That's dusty there. Okay, now let's take a look. Okay, so this this runs through here, and this gear then turns the turntable. Okay, two screws hold that on. Sonny. How you doing, buddy? Hi, Sonny boy. What you doing? Hmm? See this a little better. That didn't block. Okay, so you can see there's a pivot here. This pivot right here that was part of this, and that is really that's gummy oil that acts as a bearing for that. So we'll clean that up, regrease it. Pull this, 
pull this gear out maybe, huh? I don't know. Oh, it's broken. The screw is actually broken. One of the halves of the head of the screw is literally broken. Take the governor off so I can clean it. Ooh. Man, that one's tight. this cap <clears throat> there's a there's a hook right here it does absolutely nothing and on this shaft there is a hook That does absolutely nothing. So, but that hook and this hook indicate to me that this music box is used for other purposes, including in a music box where there would be a spring inside where a wood loop would hook to that end and the interior part of the spring would hook to this end. All right, so these pieces are put on, and I can't get this one off. Okay, there the bearing came out. Can't get this piece off because of that. So what this part has been done, it's been assembled, and then this put this plastic wheel pressed on, and uh, that keeps this from being able. I could grind that away because it's absolutely useless. It does nothing, but I don't really want to do that. I just want to leave it, leave it alone. Uh, anyway, the roller finally came out, which is good. And uh, what I will do, it came out because the bearing came out. We'll clean these up. I'm just going to dip this whole thing clean them up and then uh, I think what I'll do is I'll wash them in mineral spirits then to uh, or alcohol to uh, make sure there's no water in them. Yeah, I couldn't get this apart. Yeah, it has a screw on it. I figured that would come off of there but it didn't. So I scrubbed this with a nice soapy solution. Rinsed it in uh, water and then uh, rinsed it in alcohol to remove any water that might be in spots, so that's much cleaner. We'll oil each of the pivots that run the dolls. The music box I put into the ultrasonic cleaner and then I uh, meticulously hand cleaned everything. Uh, did the same thing. Took it in, rinsed it real good in water, and then to remove the water from everything, I put it in uh, alcohol solution, which uh, absorbs the water. So we'll get that all back together here shortly. Okay, putting the bushing back in, and then tightening the screw down. You have to have it tight enough that it doesn't pull off of the gear but not so tight that it jams. So, uh, here it playing. If I put it on the desk, and what the desk uses to be is the vibrating board. Okay, 
and it's close. And we may have to make some adjustments again, but that looks pretty good. Okay, after a bunch of fussing around, I got this now. Let's see how it, how it sounds. Okay, good show. That's ready. Okay, I've mixed up some mineral spirits and uh, oil, linseed oil, and I'm going to coat the inside of the case with that. What that does, it feeds the wood, it ends up sealing the wood. So that it doesn't produce as much dust that will tend to make the movement oh, get dirty faster. So we'll coat everything inside here and then we'll let that dry. off of it. stuff back together. 
Okay. There's the case. chains in and what we do is if this rotates this way when we wind it that's the way we got to put the chain in so we're gonna put the chain on the wheel Get it started and turn it until it gets around. And then we'll pull that. Pull the chain through until it's about 50 50. That's good. The other one, I know this runs that way, so the chain's going to go this way. Okay, let me get a second chain. chains out the way, keep them from falling back out. Get this one started. <laughs> and same thing. I'm going to want to pull that through. So we have it about halfway. Alright, that's good. The third chain is for the music box. That'll be done later. Now before we Further, I need to get that suspension rod back on. Here it is. Just want to make sure we wipe that off. You know, I think I'll hit that with a piece of steel wool. Just make sure it's got no, no gunk on it. That's sticking to the okay. <laughs> we'll put that in here. Well, I, well maybe we will. There we go. And we'll hook that on here. I can't see. Close this little loop. It can't fall back off. Now I'm going to hang this on my test stand and run it for a while. Chains on. I don't know exactly what weight this should run on. I got them running on 175 grams right now. Pretty small. And we'll let it run overnight. See how it's doing in the morning. Okay, it ran all night. 
Cuckoo chain ran down okay all night. I mean, one thing that kind of bothers me is, uh, and it's this manufacturing defect. This chain right here, which is on the strike side, drags on the edge of the hole. This one darn near does too. Yeah, it does a little bit. Uh, can't do any. I just hit it with my glasses. If the owner ever has problems with this, right there is the problem. That chain drags on the edge of the hole, and that one does too. Ever has problems, what you do is cut that hole bigger on that side. Now we're going to reinstall this, the dancing platform and the music box into the thing. This lever here has to be in a position to push on that lever there. That pulls the lock out of the hole on the right there, that lock, and allows it to run. So I'm going to stick this back in there and I can't put the camera in a way to do that. So Hey, anybody out there that ever gets a clock like this, after battling that, uh, trying to get that back in there, found that you got to keep this lever off until you get the music box and turntable back in. Okay, that's back in place. The lever's back in place. Now, some adjustments are going to have to be made to these levers here because they control the music box turning on and off. So before I put the bellows back in. I want to run this a while again and uh, make sure that all that's working well because if I get the bellows back in there I'll play heck trying to get into those levers to adjust them. Okay we got it running. Now let's run this around. I believe this is only supposed to strike on the hour. Cuckoos. Alright, so then we come to the hour. Okay. Takes the music box off. Music box is running. And it should shut off then. Okay, very good. I'm going to let it run that way for several hours. And then we'll take it down, put the bellows in. Okay, clock's been running now here for a couple days. Everything seems to be working okay. Now we got to take this back off the test stand and uh, put the bellows in and replace the uh, hour hand that's cracked. All right, so I need to take this nut off and underneath that nut is a little washer. And there and there's the hand. And see it simply has just a a hole. And then there's a nut that has a square hole in the middle, but it's round so that it, it goes against that. Now this hour hand is uh, what I want to replace because uh, it's cracked. And it's got a crack right here in the middle. So what I need to do is I need to find out how long that is. Okay. And then I need to get to my store of material and see if I can find something. Let's see, these are all big ones. 
There's a smaller one. Oh, what's this one here? Uh, it's the right size, but it's a different. It's a different uh, style. It's got a bigger hole in it. Okay. Let's see what else I can find in here. You know what? Doesn't look like I have anything that's going to be the right size. Those holes are way too big. But, no, that's too big. Okay, how about this one? That's too small. Hmm. is to make a brass insert for this and uh, it just isn't going to stay well I don't like that at all Yeah, we'll have to figure this okay, out. Yeah, I've examined the bellows. There's no cracks, splits, doesn't seem to be anything dry. They all seem to be, they both seem to be just fine, so I'm going to put those back in. Okay, we get the bellows back in. And let's turn it. I couldn't find an hour hand to replace the one that's cracked. And that one is cracked. So what I did was I cut a small disc of brass. I drilled it out and I broached it to make it the proper size to go on for the hour hand. And now I've epoxied that to that hand. And that's going to make it work just fine. So now we'll put those hands on. Okay, so we got new hands on. Okay, there's the finished clock. So you'll have your own weights, but those are the same weights. Those are 350s, or three, 320s. So, let's see, it's 10 to 5 now, so go to 4. Let it run here a day or so. Five till five, and we'll pack it up tomorrow and take it over to the post office. There she is, next to her big sister.